respond to some of the questions that have been raised um, since my last intervention. Uh, Mr Hipkins raised some questions about the repayment threshold and the decision that was made late last year not to increase that uh, for this year. A couple of things I'd say in respect of that. Firstly, uh, you'll see that the Bill introduces a much more transparent set of provisions for setting the interest rate that's to be payable where, where it is required. Uh, and that was because I felt that the, the system we had previously did allow for a bit of manipulation. This is a clearer and more transparent way of doing it. With regard to the determination of the income threshold, however, while you might be able to make the same argument in practice, the reality is also there are some other factors taken into account. And my recollection is that when the calculation was done last year as to what an increase might be, given other movements that had taken place, it was actually very minimal. So that whilst there was a cost of around, I think the member quoted 9.6 million from my statement or something of that order, the actual benefit per person was, uh, uh, from memory, something in the order of a few cents per week. So in that point, given the economic circumstances and the practicality, it was deemed not to proceed. Now, we will have to go through the same calculation at the end of this year and obviously take this year's circumstances into account in setting that. Uh, Mr Robertson raised a question regarding uh, the hardship provisions and also a general question regarding keeping people informed of changes. Can I just be absolutely clear about the, 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 the hardship provisions uh, really take us back to where we were prior to an unintended amendment a couple of years ago. The 15% rate issue, which he also spoke about, will only be applied in circumstances where the borrowers are in New Zealand and are receiving wages and salaries. Uh, and it will be taken on a case-by-case -case basis. So this is not an arbitrary situation. It's designed to deal with that situation when we're fairly certain that someone's here but isn't actually paying what they should pay and there's going to be the capacity for the Commissioner to draw attention to that. All of which leads me neatly to the next question that Mr Robertson raised which was about, well that's all very well, it's a good idea, he supports it etc, but how are people going to be kept informed of it? And I think that's a critical question and what we've been tending to do over the last couple of years um, is make much more use of interactive technologies to draw attention to borrowers of their responsibilities. I just remind him that uh, when we did the work in 2007 trying to get a handle on how many overseas borrowers we use, we actually used popular websites like the New Zealand Herald website, put sidebar advertisements on there, and stuff I think from memory, because they are sites accessed by, by people overseas. A lot of that will continue the usual work in drawing attention to borrowers at the time that they become liable of the new provisions will also continue. But again, can I just conclude on the comment that I made in my first intervention. Once we change the whole system and the way in which it operates to become much more interactive over the next year or so, then I think a lot of these things will become much easier to resolve.